Hello, my name is Sophia Kipriana. I'm 13 years old and I live in England. My hobby is to solve Rubik's Cube puzzles. In this video, I'm going to show you how mathematical theory of groups can be used to describe and solve Rubik's Cubes, like this one. What is group theory? We know that if you multiply two real numbers together, you get another real number. But would it be possible to multiply things other than numbers together, like these, and for it still to make sense? This is where group theory can help. Instead of a set of numbers, Imagine we had any other set, a collection of arbitrary objects, for example, a collection of colours, or a combination of three-letter words. A binary operation is a rule like multiplication of numbers. It specifies what happens when you combine two elements of the set together. The outcome must also be in the set itself. In the colours example, the binary operation is to mix these two colours together to get another colour. A group is a set with a binary operation which satisfies three extra properties. First group property, associativity. If you combine three things together, it doesn't matter whether you com combine the first two first, then by the third, or if you combine the first one with the result of the second and third one. Second group property, identity element. There must be one element in G, say E, that does not affect other elements under the binary operation. If we call the identity element E, then E operating on X or X operating on E should still be X. That should be true for all X in G. Third group property, inverse element. For every element in G, there should be an inverse to it. So this means if I take any x in the group, I will also find an x prime in the group. If I combine these together in any order, I will get the identity element. With the Rubik's cube, G is the set of permutations of the faces of each individual cuboids. The binary operation is combining permutations together in order. For example, all permutations can be made up of six fundamental moves. The six fundamental moves are left clockwise, front clockwise, right clockwise, back clockwise, up clockwise, and down clockwise. Obviously the order in which the permutations made matter, but it doesn't matter how I group them. In this way we have the associativity property. The identity element is do nothing, in other words no permutations. Every one of the six key permutations has an obvious inverse. For example, right clockwise and write anti-clockwise. A combination of these two is the same as doing nothing, the identity element. Every permutation is built by sequences of the six fundamental moves. For example, we can find the inverse to these permutations just by reversing the moves. Solving the 3x3x3 three by three by three Rubik's Cube means starting in a random configuration of the faces and applying a sequence of permutations known as algorithms until one arrives at the configuration where all the cuboids on each face have the same colour. The group representation of the Rubik's Cube gives us a mathematical language with which we can describe the algorithms. Each of my Rubik's puzzles, some of which you see me playing with here, have a different group structure. Understanding their group structure may help me to solve them. Have a look at these two puzzles. They look quite different. But I'm going to use group theory to show they have the same solution. This one I learned how to solve using YouTube tutorials.
This dodecahedron looked much harder to solve, especially because it goes out of shape when it's messed up. If you look carefully, you will see there are exactly one, two, three, four corners on the top half here, and on the bottom the same again. It's exactly the same as the two by two. So it looks like that this is the top face as, as, as it is on the 2x2, two two. this is the front face, this is the right face, this is the back face, and this is the left face, and the bottom face. So if I pretend that this is all one colour, and this is one colour, and so on, I can solve it exactly the same as if it was a 2x2. Two that is to say, if I look at this in the right way, it has the same group structure as this, and therefore the same solution. Here I am solving it. Thanks for watching my movie, I hope you enjoyed it.